It is an absolute honor to be back here. I don't think I've stood in this gym for 15 years. And as much as I wanted to come talk to you, I wanted to see if my name was still up on the wall, <laughs> which it is for Athlete of the Year in 04, something that I'm still very proud of. But that's for another speech, as we're here today to focus on Yellow Ribbon Week and mental health. Um, I can't think of a bigger aspect, especially at your age, to focus on. I remember what it was like for me in high school, but I feel for you guys. I think about the stress, the pressure of performing here at school and outside of school, the expectations that you may have on yourself or that your parents have put on you, and that can be very heavy. And then we throw in your wild card, which I never had, and that was social media. Oh, baby. <laughs> Now, I don't think that we know the true consequences of the mental health aspect that we're going to really be affected by with social media, but it came into play when a student told me that their social status was really based upon the amount of followers that they have while in school. And that kind of blew my mind and made me feel pretty sad because social media, in a sense, is this fake thing. We see all these people who, from afar, from our phone, are living the lifestyle of the rich and famous, but we have no idea truly what they're going through with their mental health. And more often than not, it's the people that have to show that they're doing well and they have all of these materials and fancy things because they aren't doing that well. And I don't want you guys to base your self-worth off of trying to be somebody that you have no idea who they actually are. So as we project ourselves into the future constantly with social media, trying to be somebody that we may not want to be, <laughs> we start getting into the emotions of life. And my big one that Im immediately comes up is anxiety. I'm an overthinker, and I definitely have anxiety. It's that feeling of standing, and you can't really even be comfortable in your own skin. It's almost like you have to pace around and you're always thinking, well, what can I do more of? What's coming next? And it's a projection into the future. Well, anxiety has a best friend, and it's called depression. And when depression shows up, depression is really good at just knocking you onto your, onto your butt. It can pretty much render you useless. And it's that point of life where you don't have the motivation to move forward in life. You're stuck in wondering who you are, where to go, and while you're in this little phase, something comes in and it's like, whoa, fear. Fear shows up. And while anxiety and depression were partying in your emotional house, fear comes out of nowhere. And they're like, man, we didn't invite you. And fear's like, I'm always invited. I pay the mortgage for your emotional house. <laughs> so when all three of those get together, I call it the hamster wheel. And when that hamster wheel starts turning, it can be near impossible to find clarity and to really find yourself. And I want to encourage all of you guys to explore you. Stop projecting on what's going to make people feel good or what others are doing that's successful, but what is it for you in life that's going to make you feel good, to feel happy and, and make you successful? And I you know, when we're in these modes that we can't get out of, um, I want you guys to explore your individuality because it's individuals who are going to change the world. If we continue to follow the masses of what's going on, well, nothing's going nothing's to happen. And I think your generation, more than anyone, is the most opinionated group we've ever had. And I want you guys to do it passionately and stand up for what you believe in. Now, if you guys are in this mode and can't get out of the hamster wheel, what are some tools that can help? And the first thing I think about is what do we have to do every day? Can anyone tell me? School, you do. I like that answer. You're going to get extra credit. <laughs> Outside of school, as human beings, what do we have to do every day? Yeah. You guys are getting there. I'm looking for the B word, which is breathe, right? Every day we have to breathe in order to be a human. So I like everybody to simply understand that one of the greatest tools that you have is just to take a big deep breath, right? And from that point, somebody mentions sleep. Health is huge. Sleep and a good diet, heck yeah, we can control that. Um, from that point on, what I've gotten very lucky with is that even though I'm a professional surfer, 
I have to surf every day. It is my mental escape. It's my outlet. It's where I can let go of things. I don't know if you guys have a passion or something that is your form of art, that it's a place that you can be in the moment, mindless, and just be you. But please explore that as much as you can. Exercise is huge. Get in a sweat. Whatever it is, huge fan of it. And then finally, and what is something that I was horrible at when I was your age, is having the ability and self-confidence to talk. It's something that we don't do enough of, right? As humans, we have, we've put these boundaries, and I don't know what they are. For me, when I was your age, I was trying to be cool. And a young male teenager, at least for me, was, it was not cool to be emotional, to be sad, to know what anxiety and depression and all this stuff is. It was, oh man, you gotta be cool and happy and just killing it all the time. And that came to affect me later in life. Um, we all talk about friendship, and I'm sure friendship is huge, especially at your age. And you can have all the friends in the world, but you really only need a handful of real friends. And a real friend is somebody that's there for you when it's down when we're in that emotional house that you can't get out of and life is hard. That's when I look for my friends who will sit with me unconditionally, with compassion, without judgment, and just be there and be my friend. I don't want the friends that are only around when life's good and they can get something from me or it's just great to be associated because everything's going great. Those aren't the friends that we need in life. We need the ones that are there when, when we really need to be uplifted. So please surround yourself with people that are like-minded, that uplift you. And the ones that come around that put you down, man, leave them with a blessing because typically bullying and people that have remarks to bring you down, it's coming from their own insecurity within themselves, that they aren't happy and they're unhappy to the point that they have to make you feel unhappy to feel better. So please recognize the difference between real friends and people that it's great to have around, but you're probably not gonna tell them your inner truths, you know? We need to be able to do that. It's just people helping people. I always wanna respect the severe cases. I'm talking about, you know, I guess what is considered normal. Now we have a spectrum of severe cases of emotions and what's so great is you guys have outlets to talk to. Maybe it's your parent. There's a lot of times I can't talk to my parents. <laughs> I love them very much. And if you can't do that, then Come here, speak to the student center, speak to your counselor, speak to somebody and let it out. This whole thing of us living inside our own trap, it never goes away until we choose to do something about it. And I really believe happiness is a choice. And so when we sit with ourselves, learn what our emotional triggers are and kind of find our thinking pattern, our thinking patterns, because they come in patterns, you can become more comfortable with your emotions. Something that I think isn't addressed enough is that some of these emotions, like fear and nerves, can allow you to do things that you never imagined. I'm a surfer, and I really like to surf big waves. And for the most part, when I'm put in front of waves like that, the nerves and fear that come over me, I don't ever feel until I'm straight in front of it, and it is a fight or flight response. And if you can become familiar with it and use it in a healthy aspect, you can use these emotions to do things that you never dreamt of. And again, it's just knowing yourself and knowing what drives you. Um, and then finally, you know, we talk about suicide prevention. I don't think there's a sadder aspect in life than when somebody is mentally ill to the point that they don't feel that they can be here anymore. And maybe some of you have lost friends from this. I have. And the compassion that I have towards those people is, is unbelievable because I can't think of a worse aspect of life than to, than to know the pain of what those people are going through. I lost my brother to a drug overdose when I was 17 at this high school. And it's why I sit here now because what happens after the loss of somebody, it lasts forever. And I don't want any of you to know what that's like. It's as far for me that 15 years later, I've created a grief group through surfing. We go down to the beach, I take people surfing, and then we just sit down and talk with no professionals involved. 
It's just strangers and humans with an unfortunate common bond of losing somebody they really loved. And it's, it, it, it's my life, it might become part of your life, but you guys are the generation that can uplift each other and stop these aspects of life. You know, when you see somebody and you can tell that they're hurting that day, instead of walking past them, why not just kind of say, hey, and really look them in the eyes and say, how are you? A real how are you? Not the, hey man, what's up? But I'm wondering, like, are you okay? And you don't know it, but you may have done something for that person to affect them for the rest of their life. You don't know what they were truly going through that day. And just by acknowledging them, letting them know that they're not alone, right? Loneliness has to be one of the most isolating feelings in the world. And I want all of you to know that whatever you're going through, the person next to you is most likely going through the same thing. We as humans, no matter what race we are, language we speak, we have the same exact emotions. And now my utmost respect comes from people who are willing to project it and talk about it and just be honest. Because when you are and lightning doesn't strike and you're like, oh my God, I, I said that and I'm okay. The world didn't end. God, that felt so good. I should talk some more. It's something that I need to do more in my life now because I realize the benefits of it. And um, we're here to, to watch you guys succeed, right? Although I am older than you, there's some more mature people here that were my teachers. And I know more than anything, they wanted to see me succeed in the skills that they were giving. But everything starts here. It all starts with mental health. If you're not comfortable with yourself and have the self-confidence, everything that you want to achieve is going to be almost it. So I would really want to encourage you guys to be the new norm. And the new norm of being open and honest and caring and compassionate towards your friends, your parents, your teachers, and strangers, people you don't even know. Because that's what we need to do more than anything. And at the end of the day, if you're not happy, none of it is worth it. I'll tell you right now, there is no accolade, there's no amount of money, there's no fame that can ever be better than being happy. So I want you guys to be happy and more so than anything, use my favorite word in the world. Starts with an F. Not that word. <laughs> Have fun, right? This goes fast. 15 years ago, I was standing right here, and it feels like yesterday. Uh, so I, I, I wish the best for you guys, and I want to thank you for having me be a part of your Yellow Ribbon Week. There is a student center, and I believe it's Cassie is the name. They really provided this opportunity. You guys should please go speak with them. At the end of the day, the professionals do know best. And if you know someone that's struggling and brings up you know, topics that it kind of scares you when you talk to them, that you think that they might be at a point of inflicting self-harm, please go acknowledge a professional. We have to be there for each other in every aspect for the good and the bad, but at the end of the day, I like doing this because I hope, I, I don't know, I may say, save a life someday. And that would be the greatest gift of all time, right? It's the balance of achieving what you want to do, but how can you help others along the way? Uh, so this is a huge opportunity for me, and I thank you guys for that. Is there any questions that somebody might have? It takes one person. No one? That was, that was crazy. <laughs> you have a question, I know you do. What were some of the things that you, that you did in high school to you know, help your stress? Things that I did in high school to help my stress. So I was the most stressed out human ever in high school. You guys were nice enough, well, you guys were nice enough to let me leave and go travel across the world, and then I would have to come back and make up for all the tests that I missed. So while most people were taking one test, I was taking two. And balancing my dream of being a professional surfer in high school to wanting to get good grades, uh, I, I just put so much pressure on myself. But really for me, what did it was being able to run down to the beach and go surf after school. It, we have to have moments of just pure clarity to be able to get through 
all the crazy stuff of taking tests and being overwhelmed with work or whatever it is. So I always want to tell you guys to please pursue your passion and do not ever let somebody derail you along the way. If you truly believe in something, you're going to have to sacrifice most everything in your life. But the best way to show people that the sacrifices were worth something is being your best, doing your best, and following through with it. Um, I've learned that natural ability is one thing, but hard work will always outdo natural ability. So if you put your head down and really want something, especially coming from this community, you can do anything you want in life. I kind of think I'm a testament of that. There wasn't very many surfers getting athlete of the year. <laughs> Uh, a pretty funny running joke was there was a teacher here that was concerned that I was going to be a surfer and that I should change my sport to football or baseball. And when I got Athlete of the Year, I shared it with a football player and a baseball player. So life has its funny ways of patting you in the back saying, good job. But um, ultimately, I do want to thank the faculty here for supporting what was probably one of the most random careers that any kid seriously wanted to achieve during high school. Um, so thank you guys for that support. All right. <laughs>